So let's let's talk about Freemasons. Um, I saw somebody did a video on Freemasons on YouTube. Somebody I subscribed to a few months ago, and it was uh, quite amusing because directly below the video, YouTube had added the Wikipedia description of uh, Freemasonry. And I have no idea what that entry says, but I, I can tell you there's a lot more to the story. Um, I wanted to bring two things to your attention. The first thing is this very strange picture that you see next to my face. This is a Masonic apron. So it's a piece of ritual clothing that's used in a Freemasonic ritual. It was owned by the Marquis de Lafayette, so <clears throat> American Revolutionary War and French Revolution, uh, lived to be an elder statesman of the new French state, somehow survived in the um, monarchist period, the revolution, and the post-revolution, so an incredibly, uh, shall we say, resourceful and resilient person who's um, got great reputation even today, then and today. You'll notice there's a coffin, um, the all-seeing eye, and um, a bunch of other really strange symbolism. Um, that's George Washington's apron. It was given by the Marquis de Lafayette to George Washington. It's held today, I think, in the uh, Philadelphia Grand Lodge. It's an artifact that they have, and I guess they're quite proud of it. I came across that in a book, and I had to look that up, and goodness gracious, can you imagine? So uh, this is first off to say that this stuff has been politically significant. Uh, Lafayette and George Washington, who were two of the most important men of the 18th century and laid all the groundwork for what we're living under right now, were uh, spending time and money on this stuff. So what, what is the role? What's the role of it? We're just going to talk briefly about this just to try to stimulate some questions, I guess. But this is, um, this is Alexander Kerensky's uh, biography of the Revolutionary Period. It's called Russia and History's Turning Point. Alexander Kerensky. So uh, here he is writing about the Freemasons in his book. This is page 87. Um, Tolstoy's description of the role and activities of the Freemasons in War and Peace is substantially correct. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, this organization played a leading role in the spiritual and political development of Russia, particularly after N.I. Novikov and many other outstanding political figures and statesmen had joined the lodges. There were believers as well as free thinkers among the members. At first, Catherine II tolerated the lodges. A Voltairian and free thinker, the Tsarina was not burdened by religious prejudices. The advancement of education by the Freemasons took the form of such projects as setting up of printing houses and the promotion of liberal ideas. There is little truth in the sadly distorted picture of Freemasonry that has been generally accepted, even by an enlightened section of Russian public opinion, since the reign of Nicholas I. Now, um, what happened was that uh, Pavel, um, Paul I, was uh, murdered after having made an agreement with Napoleon, a non-aggression pact, basically. He was murdered, and Alexander I was put into place. Uh, Pavel was murdered by a Freemasonic clique. Some say that was supported by England, the United Kingdom. Uh, Alexander I, here's what he, we're going to pick back up with Kerensky here. The beginning of the reign of Alexander I was dominated by men who were members of Masonic lodges. The main concern of the society was the unification of the cultural elite of Russia for the purpose of abolishing absolutism, you can read monarchy for that, and emancipating the serfs, an idea favored by Tsar Alexander I himself who patronized the order. Well, he definitely patronized the order because they put him into power after they killed his father, right? Outstanding statesmen like the liberal Speransky and the hero of the Napoleonic Wars, General Kutuzov, participated in the order. Many of the Decembrists were affiliated with the lodges. 
So uh, the Decemberist um, revolt or insurrection happened after um, the crown passed from Alexander I to Nicholas I. They immediately tried to do a coup, immediately. And Nicholas I had, you know, shot into the had his had his men shoot into the crowd, and they they managed to get rid of they managed to put put down the insurrection. But he's telling you right here that it was um, it was a it was a Freemasonic coup. The lodges were outlawed, but they probably went underground. So even though they were an illegal political organization promoting liberal thought in Russia and operating printing houses, they went underground. So now it's a secret society, right? At the beginning of the 20th century, the revived Masonic societies, but how did they how did they revive? Who said that they disappeared? They simply went underground. All right, we're going to skip a little bit. Originally, I had not intended to write about Russian Freemasonry, but certain revolutions, uh, revelations rather, that have appeared in the Russian and non-Russian press in recent years have attributed the fall of the monarchy and the formation of the provisional government to the secret activity of the lodges. So what they're saying is that the Kerensky government, the provisional government, was merely a third attempt. So you kill Pavel, you try the Decemberist, uh, insurrection, and then the third attempt was the provisional government and the deposition of Nicholas II. He says that that's not the case. Quoting him again, I feel it to be my duty to refute this absurd interpretation of the great and tragic events that led to the great turn in, greatest turning point in Russian history. I will dwell briefly upon the subject. And then he goes on to say here that he was initiated into a lodge, and um, that pretty much settles the issue for me. So no, we did not overthrow Nicholas II in a Freemasonic coup, but yes, I and other people involved were members of Freemasonic lodges, and we did depose the Tsar and take control of the government, and we're all liberals, just like the tradition of what you see there throughout Russian history and prior to that. Um, the American Revolution is not quite a liberal revolution in the sense that they mean, but again, it's an anti-monarchist movement. So I guess uh, my point in talking about this is to say that I used to think that dwelling on Freemasonry, free Freemasonry was um, a load of bunk, waste of time, but what you can see in Kerensky, what he'll even admit in his book, is that the Lodge functions as a piece of political technology for people, particularly liberals, to use to organize. It's always secret. It's always involving established political elites who want to promote liberal, democratic, republican parliamentarianism. And are we to believe that having succeeded, they will then become populists and turn over the reins of power to established public processes? This does not seem to be the case. The secret society, the um, internal structure continues to function after, if, Republican, um, Republican government, parliamentarianism, and liberal democracy has been established. Thank you for your time.